This is an instruction manual for how to use my logistical request flattening recurse over cursatron. This is not intended to be a deep dive on how this machine works, but instead an idea on how to troubleshoot this machine in your game, since it is relatively complicated. This machine works on three major principles. One, if you work on one item at a time in a list of requests, you can use a single assembly machine to determine its items. Two, by doing this one at a time, you can adjust how many are in your request field at any time. This allows us to feed our own signal back into the machine to determine what we have to craft. Three, if we take what we can craft and what we cannot craft before we feed it to any assembly machines, this prevents our assembly machines from spending any time making something they are unable to craft. Once you have this blueprint pasted and you put the machine of choice here, such as an assembly machine, make sure you connect it from the selector combinator to this machine here. This is because an assembly machine takes at least three ticks to actually produce usable input. This timing is very important on this machine. If you are getting confused on why it is not crafting something, your best decision is to look around here. These are the machines that decide if something is craftable. It is either craftable because we have the ingredients for this item, and therefore, or we don't have the ingredients, therefore don't craft, or the machine does not know how to craft it, and therefore don't craft it. You will see these reported as two consistent signals here. The top signal, the craft this signal, is what will get fed to your assemblers. The bottom signal is what you are missing and cannot craft, or are unable to craft. This gets fed back into the beginning of the machine. If you get lost and don't know exactly what the machine might get getting stuck on, you can disconnect this. This will prevent the machine from trying to flatten recipes and only instantly make its decision on the first round. Let's go ahead and look at the debouncer. The debouncer here takes the per tick operation and changes here and turns it into a longer signal for quote, real life use. This is because robots take time to do things and assembling does take time. Right now it defaults to 900. If you find this is too long, change this signal and this signal here to equal the same value. This blueprint comes with six of machines attached. If you wish to attach another machine, first take a copy of the machine, then connect the green signal to the first machine and the red signal to the second machine. Then go here and add one. This allows you to have a scaled amount of assembly machines that will work on your objects at any one time. Here's what the machine looks like during normal operation. If it is something that you will craft, it will be reported on this first signal, with nothing reported on the second signal. All assembly machines will be assigned to work on this, on this item, since there is only one thing asking to be created. Because of the debouncer, this machine will overcraft. It will not make exactly 50. It'll make 50 plus some amount of time spent still assembling. Once this is done, the machine will stop crafting and all will be fine. You will not see any craft this or missing item signals. If you have a item that requires a subcomponent, you will see that reported on the missing signals and on the craft this signal if your machine is able to craft it. What will happen is that your machines will choose to make the smaller item, the more dependent item, up to making one instance of the next item. This does cause this machine to flip-flop a bit. That means that this is best used for small, infrequent builds, not bulk assembly like gears or copper wire or anything like that.
you will see that sometimes this machine will report being stalled when it's not actually stalled. This is normal. This is fine. This is just how quickly this machine can make decisions. If you have something the machine cannot craft, say you are missing a raw ingredient, what will happen is the machine will craft what it can as quickly as it can. It's going to try and make one instance of bullets, one instance of yellow, one instance of red. But it's going to consistently, consistently report that it's missing uranium. Eventually what will happen is we will run out of items to craft and only be able to craft you only be wanting uranium but unable to craft it. This will cause the machine to lock up. This means that you have no other things your machines can do, yet you have a request that can't be satisfied. What happens is usually the item here is what you're missing, and it cannot be built by this device. Fix this by simply adding in the item that you need. The machine will realize that instantly and start crafting the next step. You'll notice that right now all assembly machines have been working on any item at one time. In most networks, you're going to have many items being requested. What will happen is that once the machine has flattened out what it needs to build, these machines, using the modulus operation, will pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, or whatever the array happens to be. This helps spread the load of assembling so that at least something of everything's being built at once. Make sure you keep your storages close to the machine, as, long as, a as well as a buffer for all items. Again, if you get confused or something seems odd, you can go ahead and remove the recursive function and the machine will continue to craft until it's unable to make a base resource, either a base resource or a subcomponent that is missing. Once that happens, you'll get told that it locks up. To restore this functionality, connect this green line again. Thank you for using this machine. Blueprints are in the comments. Have a fun time automating.